what do you think is actually a good, well-rounded education? Well, I think education should be about knowledge. It's, it, you should know more when you leave school than you do when you start at school. Right. That, that should... makes sense. I, so far I'm with you. <laughs> well, do you know what? You say it makes sense, but it's actually a very controversial thing to say. And I've been challenged upon this so much because as soon as you say kids should know more when they leave school than they do when they start school, people will say to you, well, what knowledge? Who should decide? what it is that children should know. Shouldn't children just be free to explore and to use their imaginations and to develop as individuals? And this idea that you actually teach them something and you actually pick what you think is the best thing that children should know. And mm -hmm. this goes for university students as well. Sure. Then you suddenly you become some kind of elitist authoritarian who's imposing white culture or an elitist culture on students. Right. I didn't realize that education was now an elitist culture, but I think in a lot of respects it is. But you can do both of those things at the same time, right? I mean, you can select what information to teach a child and expand their knowledge, while at the same time not stifling their creativity and ability to be themselves, right? I mean, you don't see those things as mutually exclusive. As no. In fact, I would actually say that the more knowledge you give them, then the more you enable them to be free to use their imaginations and to become creative, thinking, critical individuals because they've got some basis to form that create to form that creativity to spark that criticality but, yeah. but the problem nowadays I think is that so many people so many educators bizarrely enough think that you can miss out that first stage that you can miss out teaching people any actual knowledge and just jump straight into the let's be critical let's be imaginative let's be creative bit without doing the groundwork first and I, I think the more you you actually teach people stuff, proper stuff, then the more you enable them to be free thinking, creative, critical individuals. Yeah. But you know, the bizarre thing as well is that so many people who are involved in education, like I say, they talk the rhetoric of creativity, imagination, child-centered is the language of the day. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's got to be very, very child-centered. And yet when it comes to two-year-olds, like you're talking about, we can't leave them alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, between two and 10 or whatever it is, it's like people can't need to micromanage every step of their day, everything they do. I mean, if, if I was running a nursery for two-year-olds, I think I'd have nice toys, big open area, you know, this is for kindergarten kids, and leave them to get on with it, leave them to play, to form friendships, relationships, fall out, fight, yeah. take risks. Which is all, a part, that's a type of education. It's not necessarily the quest of knowledge per se at five years old socializing, but socializing is education, right? It is, but but I think the best socializing is done, obviously, you know, you, you have a relationship with the parents, the relationship with the teachers, but ultimately kids need to be left alone as well. So my daughter, is 10 in her school this week it's anti-bullying week oh, and Lord. I can guarantee you one thing the poor teacher next week is going to have so many more kids coming to see him to say that they're being bullied yeah. because essentially what these kids are being taught is that the normal everyday interactions that you have when you're 10 where you're falling out with people making up with people that that is now bullying yeah and instead of just leaving the kids to get on with it, to sort it out for themselves, they're being told, oh no, this is bullying. Right, and this now you have to tell on them. traumatic. Yeah, you have to sort of tell on them. Don't and sort then... it out for yourself, go and tell the teacher. But I think what's changed is that the definition of bullying has gone from being something where we were quite clear about it. If somebody hits you, um, that was bullying. And you know, if you were being hit badly enough, you could go and tell the teacher and you would expect an adult to intervene and mm -hmm. tell whoever was hitting you to stop. Suddenly now bullying has gone from being hitting to name calling. Now it's not even name calling, it's leaving someone out. <laughs> so even if someone doesn't do anything bad to you, they just don't do anything to you. Yeah. That is now seen as being bullying as well. Yeah. We use this term snowflake generation and I think I don't particularly like that term, but you can see how these kids are being then formed in school that nothing bad should ever Ever, ever happen to you and if something bad does happen to you it's the end of the world and there is no way you can be expected to sort it out for yourself you need to go and get somebody else to come in to sort this out for you yeah. and you know the reason why I don't particularly like the term snowflake generation is because it lets older people off the hook and these kids don't go to school when they're five begging for anti-bullying weeks 
You know? Right. It's, it's being given to them by some older snowflakes. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is the, their teachers yeah. and their head teachers who are saying, we are now going to have anti-bullying week, which I promise you won't be just a week. <laughs> go on. The hell, yeah. Right. Um, but, th but this is what teachers are doing to them. So the teachers are telling them, essentially, you are so fragile. You cannot cope if somebody gives you a, a slightly odd look. Yeah. And you cannot sort that out for yourself and go and say to the person, why are you looking at me in that way? You you need to get some help. So they're being conditioned to um, be scared of everything and everyone and never to be able to sort anything out for themselves. So these are then the kids who are then arriving on the college campus at university um, four or five years on from this, completely unable to cope forming relationships with each other. Yeah. I think for me one of the big problems at the moment with education is that the role of the teacher has become so confused with the role of the parents and I think the job of the parent is to kind of love the kids obviously um, but to do things like teaching them about healthy eating, to um, bring them up in their values, to teach them about sex and relationships for example. That should be the job of the parent and it should be the job of the school to teach kids knowledge to teach them about works of literature, about maths, geography, history, proper subjects. And the problem is these roles have become completely blurred. So the school is stepping in and teaching sex and relationships education, teaching about consent, teaching about bullying, about friendships. And the parents are being expected to teach the maths and teach the reading. <laughs> right. It's utterly bizarre. It shouldn't be the job of the school to tell kids what values to hold. So the teachers are kind of overstepping the mark, I think, but also not doing enough in terms of proper teaching of subject knowledge. Right. So do you think there's no role for, say, a, a seventh grade health class where they're not necessarily teaching about sex per se, but they are teaching about STDs or they're yeah. teaching about drug use or something like that? You would say that's more of an academic thing. So you, so you are OK with that or you no, think that even no. that? Really? I, w I wouldn't have any of that at all. I mean, I think obviously there's a case for teaching kids the biology yeah. and that should be done in a science lesson. But as soon as you move beyond the biology, you're putting a values framework into this. So even if you take healthy eating, for example, I do not think it should be the role of the school to teach kids what to eat. Mm -hmm. So I remember my own son when he was about seven and we'd had a very, very busy week. It was very stressful. I got to Friday and I'm like, oh, we'll get a pizza for dinner. So no, I can't, I can't. <laughs> There's gluten in there. What's wrong with you? Oh, no, we didn't have gluten you know, in the that, UK at that time. Yeah. <laughs> this is a bit more recent. Yeah. Well, you had it, but you weren't talking about we it. We weren't talking yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, but he'd been asked by the school to keep a food diary. This is like a seven-year-old boy <laughs> who, you know, spent so much time running around. He was so skinny yeah. and had been asked to write down everything that he'd had to eat and to kind of colour code it. Green for good, red for bad. That actually sounds scary to me. It, I, that, that, I just think it's completely overstepping the mark. And I'm like, well, come on, I'm your mother. If yeah. I want you to eat a pizza, you will eat a yeah. pizza. And I don't care how many calories it's got what in What kind it. of bizarro land that is where the mother has to trick the kid into eating a pizza. <laughs> I know, you know, I know. That's really... No, I know. But I mean, I think the healthy eating is one thing, but I think when it comes into sex and relationships, it becomes even more... Um, horrible because it is a complete moral agenda that children are being taught and this then feeds into universities where you have, um, certainly in the UK, demands for consent classes now. I mean bizarrely compulsory mm -hmm. consent classes where mm -hmm. the, these classes are mandatory. They must go to learn how to say no. Right. Um, do you so know these are real dilemmas that I face as a parent because um, I mean, before Anti-Bullying Week, I'm, I promise you, I'm not making this up, but the week before Anti-Bullying Week was, um, so you don't, you, I don't think you'll have this charity here in the US, but we have this charity, NSPCC, which is the National Society Preve for Prevention of Cruelty to Children. And the week before Anti-Bullying Week, this charity came into the school to do a week-long series of workshops about sexual abuse with 10-year-olds and they have this initiative called PANTS and it's about telling children that nobody should be allowed to touch you inside your underwear. Um, again, you could say, isn't this perhaps useful for the one or two children who are being sexually abused? But you take her school, 400 children in it, you know, 395 of them do not need 
to have lessons mm -hmm. in sexual abuse and it creates worry and concern and fear in those children mm -hmm. where they've got nothing to fear about and it makes them suspicious of their parents you know it makes them suspicious of adults who are wanting to help them mm -hmm. and it creates this kind of fear in in the heads of young kids so i get these letters home you know this week is sexual abuse prevention week this week is anti-bullying week healthy eating week yeah um, do they have just a regular week no is there ever never, just a, never, never. A, a sit back and enjoy <laughs> life week they don't have that or we're not going to bother you this week or never. None of that. i mean over the years there's been some really bizarre things so um this was going back a few years now but the school was into fair trade and um that this is when she was like six so how can they get six-year-olds to think about fair trade so they made posters of bananas and pictures and cutting out and all this kind of thing but because then, kids six-year-olds really understand the, the international ec economics but this is the thing because it's they, they don't obviously they don't <laughs> understand it right. and there's no pretense of even teaching them about international economics and world trade yeah. it's just preaching and it's just values so when they draw the poster they're not expected to think critically about these things. They're expected just to buy into the values and demonstrate having met these values. So they all want pictures of kind of bananas and then farmers saying, I like fair trade and this kind of thing right. with no degree of criticality there at all. Right. And then if you dare criticize it, then you haven't demonstrated that you've met the values, So you failed. <laughs> when did this happen? When when did this stuff really happen? Because as I said before, when I was a kid, I bullied and I was bullied. I remember, uh, you know, that we were allowed to get into fights mm -hmm. and, and all of that stuff. And you try to settle it, uh, you know, with, between the parents and not make everything national headline. When did this happen? And was it the exact same timing for the United States as it was for Britain? I think I think probably quite similar in terms of timing. Um, I mean, I think there's lots of different things going on here. Um, I think you can see, for example, one very, very interesting study shows the um, geographical distance that children were allowed to go from their home um, on their own, away from home. And you can see how since the 1970s, year on year, that distance that children are allowed to go has become smaller smaller and smaller mm. so essentially nowadays it's pretty much their back garden yeah I mean you're talking about literally like their ability to get on the bike and ride around the neighborhood absolutely slowly has been scaled absolutely back. Yeah. yeah yeah which is is sad very very sad um, and you can look at kind of high profile cases I think in both um, the states and in the UK of children who maybe have been abducted and how this then spreads a fear through parents and this idea that we're all kind of monitoring each other all the time so I let my daughter walk to school on her own, my or with, with another boy from her class. My fear, and this is very, very revealing, my fear was not for one second about anything that would happen to my daughter. You know, she's a very sensible girl, she'd be absolutely fine. My fear was what will other parents think of me? Hmm. And it's that idea that we're all kind of checking and monitoring each other all the time. Um, yeah. And that's really unhealthy. But I think the big what do uh, What do some of the parents think of you? <laughs> as, long as, as long as we're going that route. I mean, you're yeah, public about yeah. this. This is what you do. Oh, yeah, she walks to school every day and everybody drives past and